الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الوقت من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله we are at the end of Surah Naba we just have what 38, 39, 40 three ayahs remaining to close the surah the surah closes with a scene from the day of judgment we did see the description of the day of judgment one more time in the beginning of the surah this is once in the beginning of the surah which is 17 to 21 of course that description was sudden and violent in nature i mean we're talking about the skies being opened up as gates and the mountains being moved away um as if they were a mirage here the scene contrary to what we saw earlier in ayah number 38 ba'da a'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim yawma yaqum ar-ruh Malaika, the day when you see the angel, the leader of the angels, which is Jibreel alayhi salam, and the angels themselves. So Jibreel alayhi salam with his entire army, the day you see them standing, soften. لا يتكلمون إلا من أذن له الرحمن وقال سوابا. No one will be able to talk on that day except إلا من أذن له الرحمن except who the Rahman, the merciful, gives permission to. And what will he say? Waqala sawaba. He is going to say the truth. So, like we said, contrary to the description of the Day of Judgment that came in the beginning, this one is more majestic. It's more awesome. I mean, you see the angels, the army of angels with their leaders standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala waiting for permission to be granted to speak. What does that mean? It is showing the humility of the angels so the scene like we said is more majestic it's more awe-inspiring also towards the end of the surah when we move we see another scene in that on that day of judgment like see at this time all cases have been settled all evidences have been laid out there is no crying there is no howling there's no back and forth the judgment has been made it has been decided the person knows where he's going <clears throat> and that is what we see. We see a response to that judgment. We see a response to that realization at the end of the surah when that disbeliever is filled with complete remorse. Inshallah in a little bit. But what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say here? Before I go to 39, the phrase over here, لا يتكلمون إلا من أذن له الرحمن وقال سوابا. This phrase is related to the concept of shafa'a, shafa'a intercession. We're not going to talk about shafa'a in this passage or in this session here. We'll talk about it at another time. But just know so much about shafa'a or intercession that it does not mean intercession, in simple words, making recommendation for someone, right? Intercession does not mean anyone can just stand up start talking and pleading his case on behalf of someone else. No, Shafa has conditions. And what are those conditions? Like I said, we'll talk about it at another time. Here, as the surah continues towards a close, to, towards its closing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala next says, الحق, that is the day, the day of the ultimate truth, al-haq. What is that ultimate truth? What is that ultimate reality? The day of that ultimate truth, when everything that Allah promised, you will see its truth being manifested in front of your eyes. The day when everyone will receive exactly what they deserved, exactly what they earned. See, everybody in this dunya, they are exhausting themselves. Yes, it could be for different reasons, but Every person, whether they're spiritual or not spiritual, whether they're atheists or believers or faithful or faithless, it does not matter. Everybody is working towards something. So someone may be struggling to earn the power, influence, authority for the sake of this dunya. And then there's somebody else who's doing everything possible in their power to remain steadfast and committed to the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to their promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is their rabbi that only to him they will remain obedient, right? Their commitment to la ilaha illallah. Regardless, spirituality or no spirituality, it's an exhaustion for everyone. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Balad, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانِ فِي كَبَدْ We have created mankind in the state of physical exhaustion. We'll come to that surah soon, inshallah. But that is the reality of 
everybody's life, right? That is the truth of everybody's life. And the difference between b- between a person comes to be is in what they receive at the end. So someone struggled in the way of evil and the other person in the path of taqwa. At the end, one person's efforts, they earned him nothing less than hell. And for the other person, alhamdulillah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he finds the shade of Ar-Rahman. Keep in mind, anyone who enters Jannah will do so because of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not his or her deeds alone. That is haq. So this is the day, like we said, this is the day when everybody will be repaid exactly and in precise measure. Therefore, if someone wants to fix their ways before that, let's just say, you know, how Jahannam was described previously, Jahannam is laying in ambush, waiting to launch the surprise attack on the criminal. Before that surprise attack of Jahannam, this is the time when somebody still can mend their ways and find their way back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what exactly the surah mentions next. فَمَنْ شَاءَ اتَّخَذَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ مَعَابًا This is the truth. If you want to continue in your misguided ways, that's your choice. However, if you want to take a path back, فَمَنْ شَاءَ اتَّخَذَ Whoever wants to take a path back, back to who? إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ To his Rabb. Ma'ab. So his, his ultimate returning place. If he wants to determine, if he wants to set that ultimate returning place to be his Rabb, then let him do it right now in this dunya. You know, when did this word Ma'ab come before? When we're talking about the Taghin. لِلْتَاغِينَ Ma'aba, Ayah number 22. And remember I told you at that time, keep that word in mind. In order to make sure that Jahannam does not become a person's Ma'ab, he needs to exert his efforts in this dunya. He needs to exhaust his efforts in this dunya to make sure that he secures Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as his Ma'ab. He needs to continuously be finding his path back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying over here. فَمَنْ شَاءَ اتَّخَذَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ مَعَابًا We can only communicate the truth to you. After that, it's completely your choice. That's the max we can do. And that's what very, in a very powerful manner, the surah reiterates next, says in ayah number 40, إِنَّا أَنذَرْنَاكُمْ عَذَابًا قَرِيبًا The choice is man's alone. At the end of the day, if there's anything that a person can do, is only warn that person. Indeed, we can only warn you. You meaning who? The disbeliever. We can only warn you of a fast approaching punishment. Qareeb, fast approaching, adab punishment. What's going to happen during when that adab comes upon a person? Yawma yandurul mar'u, the day when the man will see ma qaddamat yadahu, what is it that he sent forth? What is it that his hands, yadahu, that his hands, idafa, that his hands sent forth? And when he realizes the truth of his existence, Subhanallah, what is it that he'll be saying? Yaqulu, yaqulu al-kafir. The kafir will be saying, Ya laytani, oh how I wish, kuntu turaba, that I were to become dust. Why does he make this statement? On the day of uh, judgment when he sees Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala t- turning animals into dust because animals don't have eternity. There is no concept of Jannah and Jahannam for animals. However, um, there is th- there is that retribution that takes place between animals so once that phase is done animals are just turned into dust so as he sees animals turning into dust meaning there is no there's no eternal punishment for them there's there's eternity does not apply to them he wishes at that time that he were an animal too so that he also could have could have become dust today and escape that eternal ma'ab that permanent abode which he chose because of his stubborn ways because of his flawed thinking like came in the beginning of the surah why why does a person reach such a terrible and sad and such a terrible and sad fate because la yarjuna hisaba they did not expect accounting they did not expect that standing in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they thought okay you live life once live it up party it up do whatever you need to 
but that's not what life is. And at every constant moment of our, at every moment of our life, we are constantly being reminded of that truth. That that day is the ultimate truth. But if you want to continue mocking at it, if you want to continue being sarcastic about it, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the beginning of the surah, Amma yatasalun, what is it that they're talking about? Do they even know what it is, what that day is? That day is Yawmul Haq. If they still continue to turn away from it, if they still continue to turn away from its signs, Kalla sayalamun. Soon, indeed, they will find out. Thumma kalla sayalamun. Soon, no doubt. They will find out. They will find out what? The consequences of their rejection of this message. And that's how the end ties with the beginning. Inshallah, with this, we conclude Surah Naba. In the next session, we will start with Surah Nazi'ad. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wassalatu wassalam. Wa Sayyidul Mursaleen. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in.